Hello, my name is Marius Furi. I'm from Green Proud Consulting. Today I want to make a quick video about the Expert Mark III inverter. That's the current version of the Voltronics Expert. And I want to also more specifically cover the one with the UPS, uh, which is the slightly more expensive option that has the power of flowing through it on a continuous basis so that you have a uninterrupted power supply. Uh, I want to talk about two things, really the wiring. I'm not going to discuss the wiring. I'm going to discuss conceptually how you would wire that into your property. And then the second um, aspect that I'm just going to touch on in terms of the operation is how it manages the power flowing to and from the battery and how it ensures that the battery actually stays fully charged while there is power, while the power flows away, um, then you have a power going from the battery to the loads. And when the power comes back into the property, then it will charge up the batteries and it will make sure that it maintains the battery at 100% charged state. So, this is conceptually how you would. Um, connect the inverter into your into your property. There's the non-essential loads or the yeah, call it the non-essential loads or the loads that are not on backup. And normally what you would put there is you would put your stove, which you don't use when there's a power failure. You would put your geyser. The geyser is hot and the water will stay hot for two, three hours when the power is off. And anything that heats like a kettle, a toaster, something like that, that draws a lot of power that is not really intended for use with a small inverter. Uh, the loads on backup, or what we mostly term the essential loads, those are things like LED lights and generally electronics. Now by electronics, I mean your TV, your security, your electrical fence, Things that fortunately uses very little power, but it's also the thing or the things that you would want to be on power while there is a power failure. So you would have the power coming into the property and you would connect it via an inverter feed breaker. You would connect the power to the inverter. Okay. From the inverter, you simply go to a selector switch, and that selector switch is normally a three position. On the top position, well, we always make at the top, it is on inverter. In the middle, it is off, and at the bottom, it is on bypass. Now, the only reason why you would put it on bypass is when you have a problem with the inverter and it doesn't work, then you would put that selector switch on bypass. You would open the inverter feed switch and then you can in fact remove the inverter um, and take it away for repairs and your house will just operate as if you don't have a backup system. You don't have to go and rewire when you take the inverter out and rewire again when you put the inverter back. And that's really the, the sort of other purpose of the switching arrangement that you have. Secondly, you should never touch these switches. Once it's installed, you take the selector switch, you put it in an inverter, you close the inverter switch, uh, feed switch, and the inverter manages the rest. You never touch anything. Uh, and that's the way that it should operate. Um, and you shouldn't have to do any manual interference to um, when you get a power failure, it just stays on inverter all the time. Now let's just talk about how the inverter would then actually manage the power flowing through it. You can see if you have that hexagon shown on the display, then it means that there is power being fed to the inverter. So it senses power and that power is then essentially taken via a battery charger to the battery okay and we'll talk now about how much power is actually being pushed 
bind the battery charger into the battery. So what it does is when it comes out of the battery, then the power goes through a DC to AC inverter. In other words, from battery to your normal power in the house. And that is being fed to everything that is what we call essential loads on your backup. The inverter measures the current that it has to supply to the loads at point B. When there's power, it will control the current flowing at point A so that it is equivalent to the power flowing at B. That is when there's power present. Now, you might switch on a kettle and then for two seconds, there's a huge current going out of the, the batteries and then the inverter catches up. It notices that you are suddenly drawing a lot of power and then it increases this current just to make up for that half a second's current um, that you were withdrawing from the battery. So you'll get that spur of uh, fairly big current flowing into the battery and then it settles in and it controls that the current flowing to the battery and from the battery is the same. So you might even hear the fans coming on and doing things, but it does its own thing and it protects the battery and you have to do nothing. And that is essentially how it controls while the power is on. If this power falls away, you will see that little hexagon disappearing. Then it will, of course, take power from the battery and it will feed that to the loads. And let's say it does that for two hours. Then the power comes back on. And when the power comes back on, it will say, OK, my battery isn't full. And it will control the current in A so that it actually charges the battery plus it feeds power to the loads. So it will do both of those at the same time until the battery is fully charged and then it will go back into this mode so that the current flowing at A and the current flowing at B is the same and you have to do nothing. The only thing that you will notice is that when the power goes off it uses battery power. When the power comes back on it charges the battery up and then it settles in and then it waits for the next power failure so that it can go through that cycle again. So that is essentially it. You install the system or we install the system. You uh, put it on inverter. Uh, you make sure there's power going to the inverter. And then you never touch it again. It should be operating automatic until you have a problem. And then you can actually switch it out of the, the loop. And then you can take the inverter away and you can fix it. And that's essentially the only time that you have to touch this installation. Right, so as I said, my name is Marius Furi. Um, I'm in the four ways area between Janusburg and Pretoria. And thank you for watching. And I hope you've actually gained um, some advantage from watching the video today.